The John Morris Show, episode 113. I mean, do I really need to say anything? <laughs> I think the title says it all, right? Just watch. The John Morris Show. Your life on code. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, John Morris. Hey everybody, welcome back to The John Morris Show on johnmorrisonline.com. Back, as you can tell from my face, from my 4th of July sabbatical. Today's episode, I think you're smart enough to look past the title and know what I mean by all of this. So let me, let me get into it. So here recently, I got this email from Brian. First of all, I just want to say I appreciate the content that you provide. I'm 37 years old and dabbled with web development for about six months. I learned HTML, CSS, and basic PHP on my own. I actually made a practice business website for my brother-in-law, brother-in-law's auto body shop. And it looked pretty good, was responsive, and the SEO got it to the first page of a Google search. I, however, stopped because of some difficult things in my life. I've had marriage problems and I changed jobs and now have a long two-hour commute to work and two-hour commute back home. Now, luckily, I don't work on the weekends, and I'm now trying to maximize my time. Is learning a few hours on the weekend enough? Also, my real goal is to be able to work from home and be my own boss. I'm getting older, and I'm getting tired of the rat race. Any advice would be very much appreciated. Thank you. So is learning a few hours on the weekend enough? I mean, the, the answer is maybe. I, I Honestly, who the hell really knows? I mean, that all comes down to what you're actually doing during those two hours or the approach you're taking to your learning or how fast you as an individual tend to learn new things, stuff I don't know. But I'm guessing, since you're asking that you probably feel like maybe those couple hours isn't enough. You should listen to that. But I also question if a few hours on the weekends is really all the time that you have. I tend to think like Gary Vaynerchuk says, time is seriously the only asset you have. If you want to make things work, then you have to spend that asset wisely. Are you ready to spend <laughs> One less hour every week watching Game of Thrones? If not, then maybe you need to reevaluate what you're doing. Now look, I've done the two-hour commute thing, and I know, it sucks. I'm with you. But during that, I also kept in mind what it was that I was actually doing and the kind of lifestyle I was chasing. Oh. A little rant here, but this just goes to the deeper issues with our society and the way people tend to think right now. Now, I know this isn't necessarily you, but it seems like everyone thinks that they're entitled to this wonderful life of getting paid very, very well to do something you absolutely love and enjoy. The truth is, you're not. You're not entitled to that. Matter of fact, that kind of thing is actually quite rare. Now, that's today, but especially in history. And before the internet, it was even more so. So <laughs> be thankful that you're living during this time period. Be thankful you're living during a period when the internet exists. I mean, you could have been born 200 years ago and right now be out shoveling pig crap for 16 hours a day on your farm that you had to have in order to create enough food in order to survive. So you actually get the option to survive doing something you should enjoy. You shouldn't forget that this hasn't always been an option. So. You get home after a two-hour commute. Then what? What comes after that? Now, let's say it's 7 o'clock. Maybe you get home around 7. Got a few hours to eat, shower, play with the kids. 
Now what? What do you do now? Go to bed? Yes, I know you're tired, but you have to remember what it is that you're chasing, what it is that you're after. This kind of lifestyle isn't easy. It's not something that's just going to be given to you and it requires lots and lots of work. So put in a couple hours from 10 p.m. to midnight every single night. Matter of fact, I used to do that exact thing, except it was most nights going to bed around 2 or 3 a.m. And then I would get up early, 6, 7, 8 o'clock, drag myself out of bed, put on my little pizza boy costume, and go wallow in grease for 8 to 10 hours. Think of it as an investment in yourself. And then I would get up <laughs> the very next day and do all of that again. If you really want this, then you'll be willing to do it. Now, here's another way for you to think about this in an investment mindset. You said you're 37. Well, let's say you have an average lifespan. So you live to be around 72. That's 35 years left that you have. Would you sacrifice one year of those dreadfully long <laughs> nights having to get up or stay up till two or three in the morning? Would you sacrifice one year of that to get 34 years of having the privilege of getting paid well to do what you love? What about two years or three years or five or 10? How many years would you be willing to invest? Now, I'm crazy, but I would sacrifice 34 years to get just that one if that's what it took. So the point is you have to know yourself. You have to know who you are and you have to take a hard look in the mirror and decide what it is that you really want, what's important to you. And it's 100% okay if you decide to stop pursuing a coding work from home career. It really is. If you do that, you're not somehow less of a person for it. Instead, keep your job, clock the hours, make the money, and enjoy, instead of spending all your nights coding, enjoy your nights and your weekends and your vacations. Seriously, it's okay. There's people out there who have absolutely no problem with that. And they're not lesser people for it. The truth is, it's really not that bad of a life. It's not as bad as everybody makes it out to be. As a matter of fact, it's a damn good life. Even today, when you think about historical context, but even today, for most people in the world, that kind of life would be a dream. So you can't forget where you are what time period you're living through, and be thankful that you have this opportunity, realize it's okay if that's just not what you want. You don't have to want it. However, if you're like me, and that is just not how you're wired, if you wouldn't trade one single day, one single moment of doing something that doesn't have meaning or significance for you, for a lifetime of vacations and weekends. If you're someone that has to have purpose and meaning in what you do, if you have to sit down every day and enjoy and be invested in what you're doing, then it's time to buck up, my friend. This thing isn't easy. So stop watching porn, turn off Netflix, Close YouTube, even if it's me, it's okay. Whatever it is that you do, that you do, that you know wastes too much of your time, stop doing it. Tape open your eyelids, throw open that computer, find whatever tutorial or course or whatever, and get to work. Now, I've said this before, and it's true. You can shortcut the process. But the thing that you have to do in order to do that is set your ego aside. You have to be willing to let yourself be sold on something that's actually good for you. 
There's not everything that's sold to you is bad for you. Some are really good for you. So, in my opinion, there are three things that you can do to make your learning go much, much faster. The first one is to follow an integrated program of instruction, a coherent course. Now, often, these are just going to cost you money. That's just the reality. The second, build real applications as you learn so that you retain the information that you're learning. It's not just theory. You're actually putting it into practice. Third, find a mentor and do whatever you have to do to get them to mentor you. If you do these things, then you will reduce the number of 10 p.m. to 2 a.m.s that you need in order to get where you want to go in your career. And if you really want it, then you won't be afraid to invest like this into your career. And I find it's always a trade-off. It's a trade-off anything, not just coding, anything, of time, money, and energy. So those things are always in balance. And if you want to reduce the amount of time and energy that you, you yourself need to provide to, to input into this system in order to get some sort of goal, then you're going to need to spend some money. It's a trade-off. Now, that could be on courses, it could be on coaching, it could be on products, it could be on tools, widgets, a mentor, whatever it is that you need to invest in in order to get you there faster with less time and less energy. But if you don't want to spend the money, you have to know that it will cost you more time and energy. That's simply simply a fact. So you have to decide among those options and those trade-offs what's important for you. Now for me, <laughs> I know the dollar bills ain't going in the ground with me. So uh, if I have to give something up, I'm willing to invest money in order to save myself some time. Because time with my kids, with my wife, with the rest of my family, doing things I enjoy, that's what I cherish, cherish most. But it's a choice for everybody. It's your choice. You get to decide that. So all I'm saying is know that, know that it's a trade-off, and choose wisely. Now, speaking of shortcuts and saving yourself a little bit of time, you've probably heard me before mention my new PHP 101 course. This is the exact thing I'm talking about with trade-offs. Seven bucks to learn 11 lessons that teach you the most important fundamentals of writing PHP code. Plus, you'll learn how to create online forms, something SurveyMonkey uses to rake in $113 per million per year in revenue. This is the kind of thing that I'm talking about when I talk about a no-brainer investment in yourself, something that simply makes complete sense. So you can get that while the price is still this ridiculously low at johnmorrisonline.com slash php. All right, everybody, that'll do it for this episode. I appreciate you listening. If you like this episode, be sure to like it so that I know that you like this kind of content. If you know someone who would benefit from this, I really, I really want to ask you to help me spread these ideas and spread this information to other developers because I really think it could help a lot of people uh, if you would do that, I'd really, really appreciate it. Please share this video or any of the other videos with someone that you think could benefit that uh, benefit from it. I, again, really appreciate that. And I really do believe that it'll help other developers out there. So if you do that, again, that'd be awesome of you. And if you haven't yet, then be sure to subscribe so that you never miss an episode. Thanks again for watching. And we'll talk to you next time.